Good morning, welcome back to the 120th. This is a Holger. Now, if you saw my last video that I put out on um, a variety of medium format cameras, you will have heard me say that uh, I've never shot with a Holger. Now, I've been shooting film, well, since 1990, probably about 1990. Uh, and I've never owned one of these, never tried one of these. So, uh, today that's all going to change. I bought myself a Holger and I'm going to take it out and going to take some photos with it. Holger was originally designed in Hong Kong in, and released in 1982. The original plan for the Holger was to uh, create a super affordable camera that would allow the kind of Chinese uh, working classes on the Chinese mainland um, a foot in the door of photography and allow them to take photos of all their family stuff and whatnot. 40 years later, it is still being made. There was a little break in production, I think around 2015 to 2017, uh, but it's 100% back in production now. Uh, and they're churning them out and you can still pick them up brand new. I didn't get this one brand new. I, I got this one second hand for about 20 quid. Um, brand new ones are 30 or 40 depending on there's a couple of different options now with some with some built in flashes and, and that kind of thing. Um, but this is a very basic Holger. This will set you back about 30 quid, the 120N. Now let's be totally clear. This is a shit camera. And I mean that in a technical sense. It's technically awful. But that lo-fi goodness has turned this into an absolute cult classic. The popularity of this camera today is generally thought to be a bit of a lashing out by people against the, the digital era. Um, cameras that are coming out now are just sharper and sharper and sharper. In fact, they're so sharp that we're starting to get away from reality a little bit. And then here we have the Holger, and you've got something truly organic, which is taking photos on film. The thinking is that a camera like this is never going to take perfect photos. So stop trying to take perfect photos and just enjoy the moment because it doesn't matter what you do, you can tinker with it. There aren't many settings to tinker with, but you can tinker with them all day. It's still gonna be shit. So as such, the Holger is kind of the, the figurehead of the, the film revival. It is, it's as analog as things get. There is nothing sharp or, or it's, it's the anti mirrorless, the anti-digital camera. And in fact, the aesthetic that it creates, not that I've taken any photos with it, but from looking online, um, is, is kind of everything that it's all the impurities of analog film photography, shall we say. And it's those impurities and the, the unpredictable nature of those that make the camera what it is. So there's very little to explain about it. It has a 60 mil F8 um, plastic meniscus lens, zone focusing with about a 90 degree throw on it. You have two aperture options up here. You've got one with a sunny picture and you've got one with a, okay. Wow, there we go. And you've got one with a cloudy picture um, and that is F8 and F16 respectively. Under here you have uh, two settings. You've got an N and a B. N is for, I guess, normal. B is for bulb. Uh, on bulb, when you pull the lever down, it opens the shutter and, when you, and it keeps it open until you let go. That's for long exposures, obviously. And on the N, uh, it opens and closes on a single stroke. So it's a single action cock and fire shutter, which should be approximately one one hundredth of a second. There is a hot shoe on this, which is impressive. Uh, so you could, in theory, attach any old flash to this uh, and it will fire. On the back, you've got switchable now inside. So we'll open the back. We open the back by pushing these two down and lifting the back off so easy to do that you can do it by accident inside the back here you can swap this out so that is a six by six mask um, there is also and i do have it there is a six four five mask um, and then on the back here uh, you have a switchable window uh, that if it's pointing to the 16 then what you're seeing in this window here are the six four five numbers on the back of the film and if you switch it to 12, then the numbers you see here in the middle of the film are the 6x6 numbers. Um, so that needs to be used in conjunction with the uh, correct mask inside. That's basically it. There is nothing else to talk about on here. Um, so, as this was originally designed to kind of take family photos and, and you know, for those 
Chinese workers to, to record family events and take photos of the kids and whatnot. I'm going to start off using it exactly that way. Um, my wife and eldest daughter are away this weekend, so I've got a daddy-daughter weekend with my youngest. So we're going to go and do some fun things that she wants to do, uh, and I'm going to take the camera with me and take some photos of her. Start with that, and then um, I think a bit later on I might put it through its paces a little bit, see what else it can do. I might go out and do some night photography with it, put it on a tripod, stick it on bulb, um, and go and see what we can do with that. I'm uh, actually quite looking forward to giving this a, taking this for a spin. It's going to be fun. All right, see you out there. First up, it's a shopping trip and lunch. Roll of Lomo Color Negative 400 in the holder. But it turns out that after showing you guys the shutter switch, giving bulb and normal settings, I then left it on bulb. So there's a bit of motion blur in these ones. No matter, next on the activity list is a walk in the park, an expired roll of Fuji Superior 400 loaded. You want to see the big flood? Yeah. You want to see the big flood? Yeah. Come on then. We've got a big flooded patch in on one of the paths around by where we live. This. It's flooded and frozen over. Right, wait there, I mean, I'm going to get a photo of you there. Here you go, Yeah. Right, Emmy, stay there. Do some F16 here. Superior finish, now onto some HP5. And then turn to me and give me a smile. Lovely. That was it for that day, out again the next morning, this time with a kid in the backpack. So I had my hands free to do some more landscape type pictures. So we're out for a, a walk this morning. Yeah. In, it's, I think it was about minus two, minus three. Um, so we're all wrapped up. Yeah. You having fun of me? Yeah. yeah. All right, got the holger here. Um, I've loaded a roll of, <laughs> a roll of, um, that gold 200 this morning. And now for our night shoot. Right then, it is late at night. Uh, I have headed out in the car just for a little drive, see what I see, see if I can take some interesting photos. And in fact, it turns out to be crazy foggy so there is actually an opportunity to take some quite nice photos this evening i'm going to load a roll of delta 3200 so that hopefully i won't be standing holding the shutter open all night I'm interested to see what the light meter says about oh i'll use my phone lost my light meter temporarily i'm sure it'll turn up and let's have a look what that says Oof. One and a half seconds. Uh, so let's get up, get set up, let's do this. Off into town now for some more. The fog is great, isn't it? A second and a half again. So let's do that. A little problem here, which I'll explain in a bit. Right then, I'm back from my little uh, experiments with the Holger. I quite enjoyed it actually, it was quite fun. Um, made a couple of mistakes, just for a change. Very unlike me, I know. The first one though, when I first, the first few shots I took with it, I had the uh, shutter setting on bulb. First thing to note about that is that the shutter sound is, is identical, whether you're on uh, the hundredth of a second or you're on bulb. So this is N or a hundredth of a second, ready? And this is B, bulb, ready? 
once again, N, B. They just sound identical. So there is no Q uh, that you are on the wrong setting. Uh, one way of figuring it out, of course, is to check. The next cock-up, which I would, I'm, I would argue is not a cock-up of mine, was that I obviously bumped these at some point and nudged these little sliders down a bit. And halfway through that night shoot, the back just fell off. I quickly put it back on again, but even in the darkness, uh, there was an instant few frames were ruined. Uh, and they are just, that is so easy to do. You can literally just uh, give it a nudge and it falls off. Another thing to talk about is that vignetting. I mean, that is some serious vignetting. That is like, that's not even kind of, car, isn't it a poor lens? Look at the vignetting on the edges. That's appalling. That's like looking down a bloody tube. But there we go, is what it is, so be it. Next thing to talk about is how grainy all of the shots are. And that's obviously, for some of them, is because I was using very high speed film, so I used the Ilford 3200. But actually, on a lot of the other shots, the majority of the grain is because the negatives were so poorly exposed. In other words, they were so underexposed um, that uh, we're having to kind of, I mean, in the scanning process, you'd get the same uh, effect uh, if you were printing, that you're having to essentially overprint or overscan so hard to get an image out of it that you, all that grain is is pouring through um, but you know everything's out of focus anyway so does the grain matter no it kind of kind of adds to it in short as discussed right at the top of this video this is a shit camera and the reason i've actually quite enjoyed this is because it takes you to a different place in your head you are not trying to achieve quality and I actually think it, it gives me more of an emotional in attachment to it. I'm not looking at the quality of the image. I'm, I'm remembering the moment a bit more. I think that's a real thing. That's definitely how kind of my how I was feeling when I looked at the photos that came out. So all in all, a very interesting camera to mess about with. Very glad I tried one. Learned a lot from it in the few rolls that I put through it. Um, and, and, you know, definitely not unhappy with the photos that came out of it, despite the fact that according to all normal principles of, of photographic evaluation, they are bloody awful. Um, but good fun anyway. Now, realistically, and I've thought about this carefully, I am not going to use this camera again. So I'm going to give it away to one of you guys. Uh, so I, if you would like this camera, I will even cover postage. I will send it to you free of charge. It's a piece of shit, but it's good fun. Um, if you would like this camera and you've got this far in the video, then drop me an email, hello at the120.ist. Drop me an email, say, I want the camera, please, uh, and I will pick somebody at random. Uh, I'll do it on Instagram or something uh, to win this camera, you lucky thing. And I'll post it out to you. So there we go. Next up on the channel, we're going to go completely the other direction. We're going to go from ultra lo-fi back to doing some large format. I haven't done large format for a little while. Got a new camera on the way. Um, I, you may have already seen it on Instagram. Um, if you haven't, pop over there, take a look. It's amazing. And then I've got loads of other stuff coming up. I've got uh, more local businesses. I've got loads more medium format stuff. I've got some uh, three and a quarter, four and a quarter glass plates. I'm going to get out and shoot. I've, I've been busy making lens boards for a number of different lenses so that I can get out and, and do some three and a quarter, four and a quarter glass plates in the 3-4 speed graphic up there on the shelf. Uh, so that's coming up as well. Um, I've got some more travel in my future. Um, it's all the details are kind of being uh, fine-tuned as we speak. So there'll be there'll be some more international travel uh, during which I will be taking some cameras with me. So loads of exciting stuff coming up on the channel. Uh, if you're not currently subscribed, then please do subscribe. Uh, so you can come along with me for those exciting journeys. Uh, I did want to mention that uh, apologies that it was so long between the last video and this video. I had some technical problems and some camera issues and some computer issues and God knows what. It's been a fun January. Loads in the pipeline now anyway. Uh, it's going to be an exciting 2023. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, come along for the journey. I will uh, see you for the next one. Large format. All right. Bye.